We're joined with the amazing Denise Mercedes. She's a content creator. She's been doing it for over six years now. And we're going to learn a little bit about the insights and what it takes to, to, to work such a demanding uh, job. So hi, Denise. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. Um, one question I have for you is, how would you describe yourself? What do you do? So um, I would describe myself, by the way, sorry for Pepe. <laughs> He's like right behind me. Um, hey, Pepe, you want to go over there? <laughs> um, so I would describe myself as a content creator and uh, a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. I am based in New Jersey. I was born and raised in New mm -hmm. Jersey. And yeah, I create content for a living. <laughs> and and how so you've been doing that for about six years how did you get started doing that and and why um so I guess it all started um like it wasn't like I I said okay I want to become mm. a content creator it was just like something that just like happened I didn't even know that content creating existed yeah. it was more kind of just <laughs> like um you know I'm on social media and then people would just um you know they like the way I dress I guess I was just, you know, like inspiring in some way where I was, you know, inspiring people to, you know, to feel more confident. And then from there, like my following just sort of grew. And um, yeah. from there, you know, from there, it was just kind of like, I'm not really sure what's happening, but something's happening. And I don't really know what it is, but something's happening. And then I just continued creating. And as I continued mm -hmm. to create, my following just continued to grow to grow and grow and grow and then now six years later this is where i am and i'm just like oh wow i did not expect that <laughs> and so so what what kind of things were you doing before you got into into creating were you working or yeah for sure so i used to work at a law firm as a receptionist um i was you know making like minimum wage around that time minimum wage was like nine dollars an hour and, um, you know, I worked from nine to five in an office, um, wasn't the best job. Um, I wasn't, again, I wasn't getting paid enough and it was just like, um, it just, that was it. And then, um, I ended up getting laid off after like three years and then I went to school and I was like, cause I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I got laid off anyways, you know, like might as well just like, I guess, you know, collect unemployment and go to school. So I didn't really know what I wanted to major in. And then, you know, I ended up majoring in psychology because I thought that psychology was pretty cool. Um, you and I have definitely spoke a lot about like yeah. psychology. You no, know, I love all of that. And so yeah. um, from there, it was just um, I went to school full time. But while I was in school full time, it was kind of around the time where I started creating content. But it was yeah. really like it wasn't like full blown content. It was more like. I would ask my boyfriend to come and take a photo of me wearing like this specific outfit. Uh -huh. And then I would just post it. Cause I was just like, Oh, I look cute. And I would just post it online and people are like, Oh wow, you look amazing. You're like, I, I can't believe, you know, like, you know, you're like this plus size girl wearing like this, you know, gorgeous outfit. And I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> so, okay. I mean, sure. I mean, I'm glad I was able to inspire you. So, um, I just kind of continued doing that. So I was like in school, but then also creating. And then I remember one time I was in school and there was this, this girl and she's like, you're Denise Mercedes. Right. And I was like, no, <laughs> I got so nervous. <laughs> Cause I was like, what? <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> like, I didn't know what to say. And especially cause I was in school. So I was just like, um, that happened. And I was like, Oh, I guess like, you know, my following is growing that people are actually starting to recognize me. And I'm like, oh. I didn't like expect that. So <laughs> that was, I'll never forget that. She probably still remembers, like, I actually approached her and she said that wasn't her. It was actually kind of embarrassing. I don't know why I did that. Um, but, um, but yeah, and then from there, I just kept growing. And then once I graduated and got my bachelor's in psychology, I ended up, um, I had a BA and then I could have gone to, like, get my master's, but I didn't. I just kept continuing with content creation because yeah. I actually started to make money. 
to the point where I was able to make it into a career. So where, how did you know, when did you feel like, okay, this is something big that I'm actually going to, to make that change. And, and this is a career. When did that happen? I would say when, um, when the jobs became more consistent. Mm. So like, like I knew like, okay, like the fact that I was out, like I was able to live out on my own and I didn't have any issues. I think that's when I was like, okay, I think I'm, I'm okay. I think I could do this full time and just like dedicate, um, my whole life into it. And Mm. that's kind of where I am now. And so for, for someone who, who's not into content creation and maybe doesn't know like what you do behind the scenes, what are some of the things like, how does it work in terms of, you know, building relationships with brands and stuff like that? How did you start, you know, you, how did that begin? Right. Um, so I, I used to be on my own. Um, and I mean, I guess the way it started was just by me creating content and, and then after a while, like I, I had brands that would contact me and, you know, it's hard to be able to kind of negotiate with brands um, because you don't, you don't, you're not good at negotiating. I'm I'm good at creating content. I'm not good at, you know, negotiating. So then that's kind of when I um, took the step to find myself a manager, someone who could represent me and just be able to kind of handle that side of the business and that's when I ended up meeting Keisha, my manager. I met her four years ago. And the way I found her was um, what I would do is that I, was, I would just look at other content creators and just see like what they were doing. I mean, because that, that, it's a good thing to, to just do your research and like find out like what other content creators do just to kind of, because, you know, you're, you're still new at it. So you're not yeah. going to know. Um, and... I went and I I was able to find connect with Keisha. I saw that she represented a couple of other content creators that I knew at the time. And then I connected with her. And then ever since we connected, I mean, I, I think like we had, we, she lives in LA. I live in New Jersey. So like she lives on the opposite side um, <laughs> of mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. country. And so we, we hopped on a call and then we instantly got along and it's been four years and she's been like, we're like oh, this. Wow. And so she she basically handles all of my collaborations, um, my partnerships, everything. And, you know, and now it's like it's a full blown business. Yeah. Like this, this is it. Like this is what we're doing. And so did that change like the way you looked at everything? Like the way. Yeah. They... Yes. And she was also able to give me just some insights on like what I can do to to get better because the marketing world, it, it, it's hard because for example, so I do fashion, right? Like yeah. fashion, body positivity. Um, and so what happened is that I remember I was, um, a lot of my following base were, it was like 50% male, 50% female. However, but because I was trying to grab more attention of the female, the female audience, yeah. my manager would tell me to do certain things to kind of be able to attract more of a female audience. And, um, and then, so, you know, there was a lot into it. Like she gave me a lot of tips on how to grow and how to become more successful, which I then took her tips and I'm yeah. telling you, like, it's been great. I really? mean, wow. without her, I, I feel like I wouldn't have known these things, you yeah. know, especially when you're working by yourself, because again, we're like on the content creation side. Um, and then she's on the marketing where like, she yeah. knows what brands are going to want, uh, when brands want to work with us, uh, the first thing they ask, analytics, female audience, where are your followers based? And exactly. that's important. So would you say, so what would you say is the biggest difference from when you started to now? Is it the, the things you know? What 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 have you learned in addition to, you know, the analytics and stuff like that? that... So I think I, I just, I've learned um, how to be able to market myself on like how to market my brand and like what to post, what not to post, Mm -hmm. um, being very positive, um, and just kind of just seeing what my followers like. So for example, like if I post something and like something does really well, I know to kind of like continue posting something around that 
type of content. And so it it, it is, it's just all about learning, especially because I've been doing it for so long. Um, I think I was just able to see like what does better and what doesn't, what worked for certain brands, what doesn't, and then kind of just Mm. continue that way. And so you have this amazing movement and hashtag style, not size. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Like what, (laughs) what drove you to start that? You know, it, it, style not size is such a funny story like because it's it's just like the way it happened it's like you wouldn't people would think that like we took like like so long planning this but it wasn't style not size was random it was mm-hmm. literally so maria at the t- like who's my best friend she wasn't even like into social media she was more like behind the scenes she mm-hmm. would take my photos for for um for my content and I told her, I'm like, listen, why don't we like take a photo together? You know, since you're, since we both have different body types, I think if like we wore like the same thing and, you know, I just, I brought you in, I think people would react very positive to that. And she was very like, mm, I don't know. I don't really like being in front of the camera, um, but I'm like, let's just do it. And then that's when we had posted a photo together on Instagram and then we got positive feedback. But then around that time, that's when TikTok started to kind of like blow up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I need to hop on TikTok. I need to go in there and start creating content. And um, I started creating content on TikTok. I started to grow on TikTok. Um, I would say it's fairly easy to to grow on TikTok. Basically, instead of just posting photos, I would kind of just create videos of (laughs) photos that I was posting on Instagram, right? So I then told Maria, my friend, my best friend, who's also, who's the co-founder of Sound Outsides, I was like, let's just, instead of posting like photos together, let's make a video together. I don't know with it. Cause that's, that's me. I'm always like, let's just have fun. Let's just do something different. Like, let's just, and she's like, okay, well, what do you have in mind? I'm like, well, let's just wear the same thing and kind of just showcase people how we both look different in the same outfit. And she's like, okay, fine. And then we did it. And then it went viral. And I was just like, hmm, that's interesting. I guess people really like that. And like I mentioned before, it's like, you kind of like want to see what, what, uh, what people react to, like, and if one type of content does well, then you kind of know, just just do more of that. So because I saw that that video went viral, I was like, let's do it again. (laughs) And then we did it again. And then it went viral again. And I was like, Marie and I were like, okay, I think there's something here. We should continue and maybe possibly kind of turn this into a series, like a mini series. And she's like, I'm all for it. So we went on Instagram and we were like, um, we ended up doing um, like a poll asking people, hey, Marie and I want to do like a series. Um, we're, we're, we we want to give it a name. We don't know. We're thinking like style, not size. Or, and then we came up with another name and then people mainly voted for Style Not Size. It was very catchy. <laughs> so then we just continued with Style Not Size. And two years later, we're like doing collections with Macy's for Style Not Size. I mean, it's like the yeah. way it happens, yeah. it's like, you don't even think. Like, you're yeah. just like, you come up with something random. It works out. You continue doing it and then you can become successful. That's how awesome social media is. Yeah. So we spoke a lot about the the positives and that is is really amazing but what are some of the the negatives or do you ever feel overwhelmed you know having to create so much content on so many different platforms and things like like that Yeah I do I do tend to get overwhelmed but um you know I mean I just have to remind myself to just um take it one step at a time you don't have to overwhelm yourself mm. either when creating content i think that's the best part about being your your own um your own boss is that you could just kind of like take it easy and if like sometimes when work becomes too much i can just kind of like take a break and mm. just say okay i'm going to you know take a break for now and then continue creating content um but i I'm, i am going to say it it took me a while to get to that part um, to be able to say, okay, I'm going to kind of refuse a few jobs here and there just to take a break. Because in the very beginning, I was like, any job that came my way, I was like, I have mm. to take every single one of them because I have to make money. Right. Yeah. But now after like so many years, I could finally say like, I can refuse a few jobs here and there. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's quite, um, it's quite a, a, a scary experience. What do you, 
what do you think about the the fame essentially so putting yourself out there so much that you know people recognize you yeah you know i don't see it as fame i just see it as i have a brand mm -hmm. and people people like my brand and so i just continue to yeah. you know give them what they want to see and continue to inspire and encourage and and then that's just that's it it's not i don't see it as fame or like yeah. anything more than that i just i um i just see it as this is my brand. Do you like what I do? Cool. Come and follow and I'll inspire you. And if you want to see anything or message me or, you know, I'm here, like, let's just, let's just do it. So, so what's the, what's the most rewarding part for you then? Is it the responses you get from your fans? Is it, you know, the money or what do, what do you think? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the money is amazing. Really? <laughs> um, but um the responses from my followers is like probably one of the best things because getting messages from younger women or just you know, all kinds of people just saying you've inspired me so much to to not just wear like these clothes, but to to feel comfortable in my skin and I feel like that is so important because yeah. it's it's like wow the, the the kind of impact that you can have on someone's life it's like that makes me really happy so the fact that you know I'm able to make this as a career but also be able to for it to be positive is like probably the best feeling yeah, yeah. what a so what are some of your, you know, things you have in store for the future? What do you think? Um, well, so far, I mean, I, I definitely take it a year. Like what I mm. do is I, at the beginning of the year, I'm always like, okay, this is what I want to do. And, um, and then I take it like one year at a time, right? Especially for my goals and my business. And last year, I definitely would say that I exceeded my goals by, for example, doing a collaboration with Abercrombie, which wow. I think is such a cool brand. They're being very size inclusive. And um, for this year, I have like a few more other collaborations coming. And, you know, I, again, I just kind of like go with the flow and just see, but there is a lot of amazing, amazing things happening this year already. Um, and I'm just, I mean, I can't wait to share with like with everyone, but that's sort of how I take it. Just like yeah. step I step and just kind of go from there. It's it's incredible. I mean, it's <laughs> like I watch your stuff like all the time. It's appearing on my feed and stuff. And it's it's just amazing how like if you read through the comments, how like everyone's so inspired and things like that. And the mm -hmm. you know what you bring to your your following is just um incredible. But then yeah. again. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, go ahead. I was I just thinking. Froze. I, was just... I thought you froze for a second. But, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but so you studied psychology. Um, is that right? And so do you think that that has had an impact on how you kind of read your audience or how you know, you know, what things are going to work and what don't? I mean, I would say yes. I would say that it, um, I've definitely learned a lot from psychology, but also just for myself too. Yeah. Um, I would say that, um, you know, just kind of like seeing people's reaction and what people want to see. I think, um, I think that it's, it's great, but, um, it's interesting because psychology and what I do is just so opposite. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to, to learn both and, mm -hmm. and just kind of have that on my plate. Um, so let's imagine that you you didn't um become a content creator what do you what do you imagine you would be doing instead so originally when i studied psychology my goal was to get my masters in psychology and then um mm -hmm. well in in counseling and becoming a counselor yeah. mm -hmm. wow that's amazing yeah. and um so I think a good question that a lot of people who are also inspiring to do something similar in their lives would be, what advice would you give your younger self when you're just starting out? What advice yeah. would you give your younger self? 
Um, I know this sounds like super cliche, but <laughs> it's a uh, cliche question. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just to keep going and never give up. Because again, if mm-hmm. if I would have like stopped doing what I was doing before, like I don't think I would have ever knew, like known the potential that I could have reached. Right. So definitely like just keep going because you just your potential is like more than you think it could be. But were there times where you felt like, you know, I can't do this anymore? Oh, yeah, of course. There are times where I was just like, oh, I hate this. I'm quitting. I'm not doing this anymore. Um, but, you know, there's there was just something in me that was just like, just, just keep going. Yeah. Just keep doing it. You know, you have nothing to lose. Just just keep on going. And and I did. And that's where I am right now. Just kind of like, thank God I didn't quit. <laughs> yeah. And how much support from like your family and friends did you did you have? Like, especially in the beginning, um, in terms of, you know, pushing you to to really do this. Yeah. No, um, the support from my boyfriend, my parents, my friends, it the support was amazing. I would say that um, they have been super supportive from the very beginning. I, so I was lucky there. Yeah. Um, and then I would also say that if you're trying to start a business and you don't have people who are supporting you, then definitely um, make sure to surround yourself with people who are a lot more positive and that are going to support yeah. you. No, that's, that's, that's really great. Um, I think it's a good idea that we should look at the questions and answer some questions from the audience because I'm sure there there are some good ones. So let's have a look. Um, from Elia, with thousands of videos posted every day on social media, how do I stand out as a content creator? Any tips? Sure. Um, well, I think that everyone is unique in their own ways. So I think that you should continue to have your own uniqueness and um, and eventually I think people will just kind of see like that unique part of your content and then continue to grow. I think that also another thing is that you should not change who you are as a person um, to continue um, mm-hmm. creating content. Cause I think that that was probably one of the biggest things that I never changed who I was. Yeah. I kept my personality. I kept who I was and just continued to create. Cause that's one thing you want to create content and then have people um, be able to relate to you. And then you are that person that, you know, you are, cause it's crazy. Sometimes I would, people would meet me and they're like, wow, you're like the same person that you are <laughs> online. And I love that. Cause I'm like, yeah. okay. Appreciate that, because um, I, I definitely try to stay true to myself and and be able to to, to create content and people just be like, wow, she's very mm. relatable. So you must have felt some pressure to sometimes, you know, oh, if I if I change a bit, you know, I, this content might work a bit better, or uh, what you stayed. Right, because mm, people yeah. people want to create content and have it like be seen, but I, I think that you should just continue doing what you're mm-hmm. doing and. Um, and people will will be able to relate to that yeah. more. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Niall asks, what does body positivity mean to you? Uh, I would say that body positivity is just um, a person loving themselves unconditionally, whether, you know, it doesn't matter like what size you are um, and just being happy and not comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> And a couple more. Sonia um, asks, how do you alternate your content without losing followers? I think that's that's an interesting question because especially on uh, ones like TikTok, it can be quite hard to to diversify, I think, from. What yeah. Think? So I what I do is that I have like, let's say, three types of content. And one of them is like body positivity. The other one being fashion. The other one being very like you know, editorial, right? So I always make sure that I have like my three different types of content. And then just like, some days I'll post this kind, some days I'll post this kind. Um, but I think try not to, to, to have too much on your plate. You don't want to like do too much at the same time, because then people are not going to know like, 
yeah. what you're posting. They're going to be like, I'm not sure what she does. Is she a content creator? Is she like post talking about fitness? Is she talking about fashion? Is she talking about beauty? Like, I don't even know. You have to kind of just have like that kind of content that people know you for yeah. and then just kind of stick with that. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's, it's the mar the market is very, you know, oversaturated with all types of people anyway. And it's, and it's f finding your, um, your niche and sticking to yeah. it is, yeah. is, you know, a good way to go, but it's also, it can, it can feel limiting as well. Can't it? Yeah. Do you ever you feel like there's, there are things that you really want to do outside of fashion or outside of those three main things? that you like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that, but you want to do it? Um, I mean, I, I've been wanting to become, um, I've been wanting to do like travel content creation um, and, and be able to like just travel yeah. the world yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and create content there. So that's definitely a goal. Um, I think that um, travel, travel blogs are pretty cool. So that's something I'd, I'd be, um, interested in tapping into. Yeah. I, I I like the sound of that. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a free trip to the Maldives, and you know, I saw um, you know, these underwater buildings. You, oh, just amazing! That I know, be... right? Can you imagine? Yeah, I just went there. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Any more questions? This is an interesting one from Ed. Do you have any rival? Content creators, <laughs> maybe can't even answer that one. Rival, content. rival content creators. Like, do you mean like, like how competitive? How competitive is it? <laughs> I feel like that's a that's a dangerous question. Yeah, I mean, look, um, on social media, there's definitely um, space for everyone to create. And, um, but yes, there has been like times where like, you know, people copy and don't give you credit. Um, yeah. and then like things like that happen, but it's always going to happen. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of just have to like move past it and just continue doing what you're doing. But, um, as for like specific people, no, um, I try not to like be in that part of social media. I try to always stay on the positive side. Of social yeah. media well i think that our time's about finished <laughs> so denise i want to thank you so much for joining it was really fun and we learned a lot um and i hope everyone finds it very useful um and just yeah i hope i was so able much. to give useful information yeah. I, I tried <laughs> definitely and um everyone if you want to check out denise there are some links um denise mercedes is i guess the name you go by uh, on all your socials so yeah searching that up on instagram and tiktok and yeah yeah, yeah it's amazing so thank you so much thank you and thank you everyone for joining us as well and for all your questions um and we'll see you next time okay bye bye